Maltrance plus Bloodlust. Obviously, Legion will be strong, and that's something that I've noticed Team Taker seem to do better around the Legion than pretty much any other team, is they pick to win duels in some fashion, whether it's picking a hero like Troll, who gives more attack speed. I've seen them pick Venge for the damage aura. Uh, or, I mean, the classic duo, the Scarf Mage Legion, just mass magic damage. Great way to kill during the, during the duel. Some teams just kind of pick Legion, and it's not really with a purpose. Or they'll pick the Legion, but it's just for... Uh, it's just for the purge to help keep an ally alive when they're, you know, maybe getting lassoed as like a semi bat rider counter, you would say. But it seems to me that the Tinker way of doing it is is the better way to run this hero. If you want to run a Legion, you want to pick in such a way that she will not just be a useful utility hero with press the attack and uh, some deep push from overwhelming mods, but will actually win duels and become a relevant force later on. Well, PyCat did play to one of their games the other day. This game, it will be Koikfa. So we'll have a quick pause as game one gets underway. And with that said, we'll run through our lineups here. Hopefully not too long of a pause. And for those wondering, uh, there is other Summit 2 action ongoing. Momentarily, we're going to be having our final match of the China Division. Uh, the games are running pretty damn late over there. And uh, we made some last minute changes to the schedule to accommodate Vici Gaming. They'll be playing Lai. Vici's still looking for their first win. They've started day one. Uh, well, their day one, not day one of China, but their, their first day. 0-2 oh, already in danger of an 0-3 start, and with that, they would almost have to win out, just have a shot at qualifying uh, for the playoffs, let alone for the main event. But with that said, uh, if anyone can bounce back, it's probably FY God and friends, and with that, we introduce the bulk it bears Corleone, 1-4 so far in the Summit 2. You've got Padrino playing your Necrophos, heading to the offlane, but he'll have some good defensive support backup in Solitude, or maybe not. Uh, he said, was heading top, now he switches. Maybe they put Levy there instead. And, uh, just gonna pass off the Observer Ward. Weeha will be going mid as the Brewmaster. Levy, the Vengeful Spirit. And that does leave Hockey as the safe lane Wraith King. So not gonna see Weeha in a traditional carry, but definitely here where he can showcase his micro skills, which are some of the best in the business in the European scene. As for Team Tinker, Sing Sing will be playing here, though. He used to play all the freaking time uh, back when he was... Uh, back in the old days. But nowadays, uh, I don't see too much troll from him. I would say Fada is the main European player that runs it. But since he will be running in a tri lane, not as a solo mid. Uh, he, when he first came out, it, troll was a much stronger solo mid, just because the Whirling Axe is uh, quite a bit more damage than the, the melee axes, and so you could more easily flash far and bottle crow and push the lane. But yeah, Sing Sing on your troll, EGM the Rubik, that puts Boba onto the Ogre Magi. And going mid will be Koikfa as the Legion. Something we don't really see too often in the competitive Legion usage. Generally, we see him safe lane, or, or uh, safe lane in a 1v1, or sometimes even in an off lane role. Uh, that's probably the most common position for him. Then Pycat will be on your Slark. Uh, he will find Padrino off the bat. He hasn't skilled anything yet. He's gonna skill Leap, and he leaps into the trees, and, well, right into an Abaddon. So, level 1 Leap skill, but this is not the lane that can punish it. You go against some lanes, you don't skill Leap, and... Uh, or, so why, why am I saying Skilling Leap? Jesus Christ. Coffee. At least, I'm, at least I didn't fuck up my overlay. That's something, right? Alright, they're looking for Levy now. Boba coming in. He's got Ignite still available if he wants to skill it. More likely we'll see the Fire Blast. They've got a very strong tri lane here. Not so much at the early levels. Uh, Rubik is a bit lacking at damage level 1, but they'll get the body block off Sing Sing. Has gone for the Berserker's Rage, just to help him last hit early, and you can get off some extra auto attacks here. Potentially with the, well, with the axes, you don't have the ranged axes, so again, it's, it's a lane that gets much stronger at level 2. Uh, that's where you'll have your range and melee axes, you'll have Fade Bolt for EGM starting to be leveled up, and Bulba will have the stun as well as Ignite. Yeah, Pycat getting aggressive here in the top lane, but... He will have to leap out relatively soon. There's no heal just yet, but well, he's got seven, seven tangos and a salve, and he will be chewing through them rapidly. You all double sentry wards drop. I did not actually see the ward placement for Team Tinker. Let's see, did they get double D ward. I think they did. I'm busy trying to remember skill names. That's a great start for for BBC, and it makes this tri lane much more difficult, of course. You know, well, they've managed to keep an Observer Ward of their own up top, though. It's not really going to be too 
useful as Pie Cat. Any sort of movement from him uh, will be spotted anyway, because he'll be in the lane. Saints are going to dive hockey a bit bottom lane. They got off an initial stun. They're chasing him down with right clicks. One more auto attack would do it, but they get fogged. The shield, not. Oh, well, she throws the shield out second. They heal enough to save him. Saints Saint will end up being your first blood. Great rotation from Solitude. The teleport scroll ready. And caught him by surprise. And on the back of this, Pie Cat will look to get aggressive. A little bit, anyway. But doesn't really have the skill points to do much more than some harassment. Level 2 Slark, not generally in a killing position. You'll want to hit, like, level 3 to 5 for that. That's pretty costly for Tinker. Going aggressive tri lane and... Well, this does free up their Slark. They are farming well in all three cores. By no means the end of the world for Tinker, but a slow beginning for them. It's Pedrino. That's the level 2 heal. There's actually no mana. Pycat, he may end up going down here. I think two more auto attacks will be needed. Maybe three. Juki through the trees. Pedrino committing for this one. He gets fogged and then he gets a little bit nervous that he'll get too fogged and end up going down. So he'll just retreat out. Still though, lane is now very difficult for the Slark. Pycat, who started with eight tangos as well as a salve. Now entirely out of regen. Only two tangos remaining. And still a long ways off from that level 6 where he is basically permanent down the trip whenever he jukes into the tree line. They're going to rotate EGM. They've decided this, this lane is not working out for us and we see Solitude rotating bottom. You can farm your Wraith King if you'd like, but we're not too worried about it. We'd rather focus on keeping the Necrolite down, who is, end of the day, most likely to be the main one position for this team. Yeah, Quake was doing a great job mid though. Not often you see... Any melee here get the better of a brew, let alone for Koikfa to beat Weeha this hard. Already 18-1 to the 13-1 of the Brewmaster. And Saint Saint, despite being in a dual lane, he gets a bash under the tower. Bulba's gonna lurch up, they slow him. Is there an Abaddon shield? There is! But, actually no, he used the heal, he doesn't have mana for the shield now! Oh, costly misplay by Solitude. I don't know if it would have been enough to save him, but you definitely would rather use the shield there over the heal. If possible, just to remove that slow, if nothing else. And also block a, a decent amount of incoming damage. And Koikfo will now find a bounty rune. Top rune was a regen, so probably a slight victory there for Weeha. He needs all this, all the sustaining he got up against the Legion Commander Harass. That overwhelming odds really does pack a punch. And see Koikfo throw out the heal at himself. He can overwhelming odds this if he wants, but for now, just holding it. Gonna save his mana for a more important cause. Sing Sing gets back on the board here in the bottom lane, and it's just funny how they succeed. Oh, looks like they might rotate on mid. Levy's trying to set up. It's funny how they succeed with a dual lane where a tri lane failed, but then again, they were diving earlier and underestimate that defensive support of Adam. They'll go on a Quake, but he's not able to cast it's anything on himself. Doesn't get the heal off the time. The clap from Weeha secures the kill. Nice rotation from Levy. Good takedown for him in the mid. And this will prompt Bulba to get active for some warding. I found your gold swing for that one. Brings, the, brings everything back into equilibrium. Still very early, very even for both teams. The offlane Necrolite's still doing reasonably well, considering that Pedrino's mostly been on an island 1v1, but he's done a nice job. Almost solo killed Pycat, he's kept his farm up. And now they will transition back. The switcheroos continue with Solitude, this time coming to the top lane. So looking at the looking at the drafts a bit more, uh, as this goes later, uh, BBC a pretty pretty underwhelming lineup in the lane stage. Wraith King doesn't really have much lane presence, just an initiating stun, no real lane control to speak of. Padrina gets a lot stronger on the Necrophos, and they're actually going to draw the creep wave back here. So we get some momentum, I guess. I, I think they wanted to backstab, but Tybu was a little bit off. So whether that was the case or not, they're just going to let the lane stack up, farm a bit. Necrolite later on is, I, I think, a fantastic answer to the duels of multiple levels. One, he generally builds tanky, so even if he does get dueled, he's more likely to survive than most. Two, uh, his ultimate is a great interrupter for that. And three, and I think most importantly, uh, the heals, whether it's from a mech or just from death pulse, can help to not just keep your ally alive, but also potentially get that kill in the Legion Commander. So I'm liking the Necrolite pick as he matches up versus duels later on in the game. Uh, he is a very prime dual target, though. And they're going to dive Pycat here, perhaps. Pedrino was thinking about it. Didn't have the ultimate. Oh, oh, he's he's only five. Under. One creep from six. Had he had it, you could just use your Reaper Scythe and, and set up a clap for a kill. 
Yeah. So we'll leave hockey on an island bottom lane is they're gonna make another rotation. Put Levy mid to get your level six. Very important to get that quickly versus Koikfa's Legion, who is getting a lot of farm this game. Expect to see that blink drop. I haven't really seen too many upgraded boots before the blink. Stun comes out from Levy. Trying to D ward, but he could get dueled for this. Oh, Koikfa was thinking about it. Really want to have one more nuke before you go in for that duel, though. He did manage to finish off the ward, although he's playing with fire here. Park out the EG. I'm trying to hold the line in this top lane, but they have a Bruce split ready. This is a very difficult defense. Taker just want that deny, and they won't get it either. We are able to clap, and they have a Necrolite ultimate. They're gonna Bruce split too. EGM heading to the south, the boulder toss on the Pycat. Will there be a cyclone to follow this up? Reaper Scythe will be almost dodged, but not quite. Nice toss up and down. Good micro there by Weeha. Thought for a second he would just save him from the scythe damage. But very nice micro wall on the bottom lane. They're diving on the hockey. Not level six yet on the Wraith King. Ends up getting bashed down by not really bashed, but metaphorically bashed down is what I mean. Uh, by the the Ogre Magi's ruthless onslaught. As BBC's Levy will move down towards the bottom room. He thinks about a deny, but he hesitates for a second, and this could cause trouble for him. Gets off the stun, continues to retreat, but Koikfa has the higher move speed here. 403, will he get off the duel in time? He's still a bit faster, but doesn't really know what's lurking from around the corner. And in fact, it's Weeha's brew. That was getting into position. Almost has his blink dagger now, up to 1980 gold. Not, they did not farm particularly well in the lanes in general. Weeha got dominated mid. He's 11 CS down. Some of that coming from the fact that he rotated top. But, oh, your Legion's been getting the bottom room repeatedly in the case of Koikfa. So that has not helped him keep up in terms of farm. Yet he still leads by a lot. And comparing the Necrolite to the Troll, getting, getting basically the one position farm, even though they're in the offlane. Um, even though generally I would, I would say Troll is more of a three. Or maybe a 2, depending on the game, but yeah, Sing Sing City at 56 CS. He's rushing a Vlad's, and this looks like a lineup that wants to try and sneak a Roshan. Very easy for a troll to do that. Battle Trads, just go walk in, start bashing. You've got multiple melee heroes, the, the press the attack to help keep your team alive in the pit. Bloodlust has been skilled up by Bulba, he's taking the value point there. This is a lineup they could do Rosh very early. And they also have 4 melee heroes, so... Well, 4 potentially melee heroes, anyway. 3.5, I suppose. So it can go, it can be an early Roche sneak, but even if they just want to fight with the Vlads, it's not a bad value pickup. And out it comes, already completed, your ghost beaver fucking real beaver. Also known as the Beaver Knight, we'll deliver that. <laughs> oh, Sing Sing, never change. Meanwhile, Padrino struggling a bit more to complete his first item, and it's an important one. Without this mech, there's real potential to kill the Necrolite right now. And you'd love to get that snowball rolling if your team tinker. Koikf was already headed bottom to make it happen, has the duel ready. But Solitude sits right behind Padrino to protect him, and won't be able to find a solo kill, that's for sure. Without a double damage rune or a haste to chase him down. The Legion can hold the line for sure and protect the tower, but Koikfa will not be solo killing this Necrolite without this. Not when the not when the Abaddon's in the back line support him. Weha has revealed his blink. Unfortunately, he tried to go for a jump mid, but wasn't able to get the clap on Bulba. That's a bit of a loss. That, that was a pretty good blink timing. And now that it's revealed, Tinker know they have to play more defensively. For a go on hockey here, would like to pop that Wraith King ultimate fairly early, but... Not able to do so, and I think Taker are pretty happy with the situation. Sing Sing, he can go Roche with this Vlad's, but in the meantime, he can also jungle. Freeing up the lane for the Ogre. Definitely needs his levels more than your your everyday regular support. Not so much a little farm wouldn't be too shabby. Get that Aghanim's quicker. Go to work. BBC trying to use the woods a bit, but th they don't really have heroes that farm it as efficiently. Wraith King's not too bad, but doesn't have the damage that a troll brings to bear. Sing Sing cleans up another 900 gold worth of neutrals over the past few minutes. Now they're gonna have a fight for the top tower. Dark Pact is available. He stopped to auto attack, trying to finish off hockey, so the tower will be denied. And now Pycat gets done. Dark Pact's still cooling down. They're gonna clap. They will Bruce split for this boulder toss. Pycat with the leap up onto the trees over the ravine. 
That's a Bruce split down for nothing in return. Well, a tower deny, but it wasn't the Bruce split that secured that. And you can see this Abaddon is just glued to the hip of Padrino. They are not going to give away any easy duels. But right as I say that, he backs off and Padrino walks forward, but... Uh, still relatively close. Mech coming soon. They're going to nuke Padrino, but I'll just shrug it off with an easy heal. Then a double heal to bring him back to full HP. And Looks like he's finally got a mech on the way. That's a big item to have. There's their duel. Right as I go to show the mech. Multicast to follow it up. It's too many heroes for him. Bottom lane. And they'll charge in with a, a very oversized Slark. Leaping forward. They'll stun on Bulba, but they need a little bit more follow-up. Where's that Brewmaster split? You'd love to have it now. Oh, wait. So they wasted that. Wraith King ultimate deployed. Not really ideal, but it'll keep him alive for now. Hockey's still latched in place, and it looks like he may end up going down. Another heal. Another shield. If this isn't going to save him, then I don't know what will, but Tigger just keep on diving in, looking for more kills. They'll find the Abaddon behind the tower. Koikfa to secure that. It's three or four heroes down already, and they're not done just yet. Koikfa now retreating out. And can they stop any TPs? Petrino has his ultimate, but... He's gonna give up the chase. Radiant and that was with Sing Sing pushing in the mid lane. He's taking down a tier 1 tower during that time. A total of 4 Radiant takedowns tower and a tower to boot. Attack. A massive gold swing there. Favoring Team Taker, of course. And they'll look for more. Duel's ready in 4 seconds. You just go on Weeha here. Oh, this is too much of a bait. Weeha, he's fallen victim to it. They duel. The shield. The heal. Not enough. Still a winner. You, sir, are the winner. Congratulations. Win deeps. That's two duels in as many minutes going the way of Koikfa. Now up to plus 20. And remember, as always, Tinker built their drafts around their Radiant leaping commander. So he has, has he has the additional fallen. attack speed and move speed of a blood loss to work with. Not to mention the battle trance attack speed. That's a plus 60. Your ogre magi giving you already a plus, another plus 20 there. They'll use a necrolite all bottom lane, but Bulba fights through it. He multicasts, but only on the slow. Not ideal. EGM barely able to survive. Gets the the one for one exchange. Another good play for Tinkers. I take down that Necrolite again, and this opens up the way for a Roshan soon for Tinker. Tier one still not down bottom. That may be their first objective. Levy trying to juke through the trees. He actually will foil Pycat's efforts for the chase. So he goes back around again, in, this time into the sentry. He didn't get off the dark pack, but he got off the leap, and that's the main thing. Koikfa looking for the duel. Not again. You can't allow this. Oh, plus 30 damage now for Koikfa. Too much. He'll purge himself and try to retreat out. Boulder tosses coin out in one second. They throw up the troll in the air. That pesky blind. They just want it out of the picture. Boulder toss. Not going to happen. The blink out's too quick, so they'll go back for Sing Sing, but he's got a mech and 19 armor. No mana for the mech. He pops his stick charges. Actually, a bit of an issue for the troll. Even with that blast. They may need a pair of arcane Oh, they've got two on their supports. Well, maybe you should help him, Bulba. EGM. Get your heads in the game. Got a level 3 Wraith Fire Blast as well. Great tower diving potential. This is the kind of Dota take over to play. Face rush, aggressive. As soon as Bruce splits down, just force the issue. Great clap from Weeha. Try to force everybody back and. Single-handedly, he'll keep his entire team alive, but that doesn't stop the chase fully. They stun, they go for yet another duel. It's plus 44 damage already on the Legion at 15 and a half minutes. He's got the majority of a Sacred Relic at its boost damage pool, and it's not over yet. Petrino will fall too, and they find Weeha as well. He has stick charges, he has a teleport scroll, but too many single target stuns and bashes to boot. Koikfa finds another. 11 to 4, your score. A 10,000 gold lead, 8,000 experience. BBC. Has fallen. Looking just completely out of their element here. They took down Empire the other day. Granted, Empire lost two games in a row, but... They have taken down, or at least put up a good fight against some good teams, but Tinker right now is... Just seems to be on another level. And a lot of it just comes back to the Bruce Blitz not really being used effectively. Those first few fights not going your way, Tinker is the kind of lineup that will take advantage. They snowball extremely well. And already a total of plus 68 damage between the dual victories and the Mithril Hammer. That's a lot for Koikfa, who continues his aggression. 
Might even look for, uh, no, maybe not. Just farming the enemy neutrals. Yeah, take that, neutrals. Roar! Oh, he's being aggressive, but <laughs> not on heroes for now. Quite for showing some good restraint there. As that was right around the time when everyone on BBC respawns and... When you're kind of when you're in this awkward position where you're forced back, you tend to just group up mid lane. <laughs> Wouldn't have been a good time to go in, but let's freeze up Pie Cat. He'll continue split pushing the top lane. The Maelstrom pickup for Koifa. More often, we've seen the BKB uh, or the Blade Mail pickups. There's some decent magic damage this game. I, I think you can argue for BKB, but you don't really need it now. Koifa, this will allow him to split push, keep the farm. Going and a Mjolnir is a nice item to have when you're dual when you're dueling. They're likely to be throwing a bunch of auto attacks at you. Just anything to try and help their team win the duel, and so you can bounce it right back the other way. Not to mention, it's a very cost-effective damage item when you have this much bonus attack speed. 120 from the battle trance, and now Ogre Magi beginning to level up his blood. Lost another 30 there. Easy age is going the way of Koikfa, and for those just joining us, this is only the beginning of a long day of Dota here on uh, Beyond the Summit. Coming up next, we're going to have Alliance take out BBC later today. Alliance versus Empire, Navi versus PR and M5, and then Tinker versus Alliance to round up the day. So we see pretty much every team twice today. It's uh, kind of a, a tightly packed day of Dota. We'll get a second look at BBC as they take on a, a, another staunch opponent, though not one who's been looking as good as Tinker lately. Alliance also struggling a bit in the summit too thus far. Bottom tower but things is looking good now for Tinker. A siege begins, but the troll ultimate, there is not much time to decide whether or not you want to defend, and while that's going on, PyCat is fishing for jumps. We won't go in yet. They take down the tower, and now the leap off the mark. Even if it weren't, the Wraith King's relatively in his vicinity, there will be a teleport out. But now Tinker can begin to cinch that noose a bit. Only one outer tower stands, that's the top tier two. The pings are coming out. And it looks like Sing Sing will go deep push the top lane. Might be in a bit too soon though, his team's not really behind him yet. And then they'll go for the final outer tower. He's charging Weeha, tries to get the axes, and goes for the bash, but there's an invis in here. Hoping to just cancel that blink dagger and slow out the Brewmaster's retreat. Three lead farmers all on the side of Tinker, and heroes that do scale reasonably well with items. I still think a, like an incredibly farmed Necrolite and Wraith King can outcarry almost anything that, that Tinker would throw at them, but they're nowhere close to that. Out. And in fact, the jump's going the other way. Pycat now caught out by multiple heroes mid lane, just committing to this levy kill, then realizes he doesn't have it, tries to run, bottling, leaping. There's an Observer Ward here. To remove that bonus move speed from Shadow Dance, but it doesn't really matter. They can't chase him, and they know it. Unfortunate situation here for BBC. A lineup that's built around very good usage of Brewmaster Ultimates. You get your early mech, you go for the timings with the Blink Dagger, take towers, hopefully force the other team just not to defend, or if they do, you wreck them with the clap ult, but... Tigger just got a bit too far and too quickly, found too many dual pick offs, took down towers on the back of it with the troll ult. Now they've got the Aegis on their side and they'll try and engage BBC. Nothing if not persistent. We'll commit to this one. On to Quake for they go. Remember, he is Aegis. Even if he dies the first time, he throws out overwhelming odds, continues to retreat through the tree line. Juking here and there, the Aphotic Shield on the on the brew, not really enough to get anything accomplished. But Sing Sing runs through the tree line as well. Three heroes kinda caught out, but. Kinda don't care either. Pycat turns and they'll focus the Wraith King. Hockey kept alive for ages. At least three or four heals used to help secure it. But now Levy, a dual target. They'll use the Necrolade ult. They prevent the duel. Actually, the winner goes to Levy. Even though the Aegis is there, he'll still get the bonus damage. And now Quake comes back down to the fight, slices off Hockey's head on round number two. Wraith King ult now used up. Brewmaster split also deployed. And now it's Trouble City. Three heroes down. Tinker. Still pretty much wiping the floor with BBC. Well, they did give away this. That precious dual damage. Tinker will push in the top lane. The tier 2 will be taken down. This is the last outer tower. 
And from here, it's a hop, skip, and a jump onto high ground. And they're going to do it now. They know Bruce Blitz down. They know Necrolite ult, not so important, but is down. And they also know Wraith King ult, very important, is down. There's very, very little way for BBC to defend. They don't actually have much deep push. They're meant to be the ones on the aggressive, not the ones forced to defend. And look at this, this quick auto-attacking. All these heroes on some sort of stimulant, Quake in particular. Just hacking away at buildings right now. Really not afraid. The stun hockey again. The overwhelming odds comes through. They latch on. They get a duel on Padrino. No way to save him. No, another winner. This time for Koikpa. Back up to adding gold or, uh, damage to his total. GG. Malkin Bears Corleone. Run over by Team Taker. In our opening match of the Summit 2 Europe for the day. We have farmed up. And, well, a nice win here for Tinker. Who improved to 5-1 in the Summit 2. Fantastic stuff from them. All right, so where does that leave us? Well, it leaves us with Lie Gaming versus Vici Gaming currently underway. That's at Twitch.